welcome all in this lecture uh, we will mainly discuss the conditions under which rn of x converges to zero as n tends to infinity uh, in the method uh, in the iterative method of uh, solving integral equations of second kind that is by the iterative method we have uh, formulated the solution in the form y of x is equal to fx plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity lambda raised to n kappa n of f of x where uh, kappa is the uh, integral operator only if rn of x converges to 0. So now we have to consider the conditions under which uh, determine the conditions under which Rn of x uh, converges to 0 and under which the series converges and represents a continuous solution of the corresponding integral equation of the form uh, equation number 1 that is y of x is equal to fx plus lambda integral a to b k of x theta y theta d theta. Here f of x, there is a function f of x which is both continuous, f and k are continuous. So it is a non-homogeneous integral equation of second kind. And we have already uh, uh, told that this method is applicable to both Fredholm and Volterra type integral equations of second kind. Especially for solving the non-homogeneous integral equations of second kind, we can use these method a successive approximation or uh, method of iterative method or method of successive approximation so in this uh, lecture we will discuss uh, mainly the uh, method uh, mainly the, uh, the conditions under which uh, this term rn of x uh, converges to zero so that uh, the remaining uh, so that the equation uh, 1 has a solution of the form uh, equation number 5 that is y of x is equal to fx plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity lambda raised to n kn of f of x so we uh, we have already given that k of x theta the kernel k of x theta and the function f of x are assumed to be continuous for all values of x and theta in open interval ab then their magnitudes certainly are bounded in open interval ab so that there exists constants capital m and small m such that mod of k of x theta less than or equal to uh, m capital M and mod of fx less than or equal to small m in open interval AB. That is, say being continuous functions defined in an open interval AB, we know that they are uh, bounded. So, there exist by the definition of boundedness, there exist constants. Let it be capital M and small m such that mod of k of x theta less than or equal to uh, capital M and uh, mod of uh, f of x less than or equal to small m. Now we also suppose that the magnitude of the initial approximation. The initial approximation we have taken as y naught of x uh, we, uh, which in substituting in the given integral equation we get the first approximations and so on. So uh, suppose uh, that this initial approximation is also uh, bounded in open interval AB. That means modulus of y naught of x less than or equal to some constant is c in open interval AB. Put it as number 2. Then uh, for finding the solution uh, uh, we need to our aim is to prove that Rn of x converges to 0 and we know that Rn of x is given by lambda raised to n kn of f of x. And see, we need, sorry, uh, lambda raised to n y naught of k of y naught of, sorry, rn of x is, uh, rn of x is lambda raised to n, um, 
kappa raised to n of y naught of x. So this we need to show that this converges to 0 as n tends to infinity. So for that um, first we calculate kappa of modulus of kappa of y naught of x. Kappa of y naught of x by definition it is modulus of integral a to b k of x theta y naught of theta d theta with the assumption that the upper limit beta b is greater than a. So, uh, this will be less than or equal to integral of their respective modulus. So, integral a to b mod of k of x theta y naught of theta mod y naught theta d theta. And uh, by our assumption mod of k of x theta less than or equal to m and mod y naught of theta less than or equal to c. Then we have into integral d theta. Uh, so, that will be b minus a. So, we have equation number 3. That is modulus of k of y naught of x less than or equal to m into b minus a into c. Similarly, uh, modulus of k kappa square of y naught of x is equal to modulus of kappa of kappa of y naught of x. And we have by definition of the kappa, we have uh, this is modulus of integral a to b k of x theta kappa of y naught of theta d theta. Now substitute the value of kappa of y naught of theta which is less than or equal to m into b minus a into c and mod of k of x theta is uh, less than or equal to m. So in total we have this will be less than or equal to m into m into b minus a into c into uh, integral a to b d theta that is b minus a that means in total we have um, mod of kappa square of y naught of x less than or equal to m square into b minus a whole square into c. So in general we can write kappa raised to n of y naught of x is less than or equal to m raised to n b minus a raised to n into c put it as equation number 4. And in the same way, we can find kappa raised to n of f of x also. That is kappa raised to n of f of x. By definition, this is modulus of integral a to b k of x theta f of theta d theta. Then by definition, mod of f of theta is less than or equal to small m. Then we have this will be less than or equal to capital M into b minus a into small m. So similarly, kappa square of f of x, its modulus is less than or equal to m square b minus a whole square into m. So kappa raised to n of f of x its modulus is less than or equal to m raised to n b, b minus a raised to n into m. Now consider r n of x is equal to lambda raised to n kappa raised to n of y naught of x. Then modulus of r n of x is mod lambda raised to n uh, m raised to n b minus a raised to n into m. or this is less than or equal to not equal to so this will be uh, less than or equal to because mod of kappa raised to n of y naught of x is less than or equal to uh, less than or equal to mod lambda raised to n uh, m raised to n b minus a raised to n into m by equation since by equation number 4. So we can see that this Rn of x uh, converges to 0 as n tends to infinity if mod lambda is less than 1 by m into b minus a. That is Rn of x converges to 0 as n tends to infinity if mod lambda is less than 1 by m into b minus a. This is because uh, consider that uh, series lambda m into b minus a uh, into c plus lambda square m square b minus a whole square into c plus lambda uh, cube m cube b minus a whole cube into c plus etc. Now taking lambda m into b minus a into c outside we have the infinite series 1 plus lambda m into b minus a plus lambda square m square b minus a whole square plus etc. This is an infinite gp and which converges only if uh, 
mod of uh, lambda m m into b minus a is less than 1 or this is conversion if mod lambda is less than 1 by m into b minus a thus we have uh, rn of x is less than or equal to uh, some constant we obtain that is mod lambda raised to n m raised to n b minus a raised to n into c and this will be conversion uh, if um, the series, uh, the right hand series of constants, this will be conversion if uh, 1 by mod lambda is less than 1 by m into b minus a. Then in that case, uh, Rn of x will converge to 0. So in that case, uh, we can say that or we can have also mod, mod of kappa n of f of x is less than or equal to m raised to n b minus a raised to n into small m and then the solution will be of the form 6 that is y of x is equal to fx plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity lambda raised to n kappa n of f of x. So consider the modulus of these functions mod fx plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity mod lambda raised to n mod kappa n of f of x. And we have seen that the, the Rn of x converges to 0 only if mod lambda is less than 1 by m into b minus a. So if mod lambda is less than 1 by m into b minus a, we have the solution in the form, uh, the solution is given by equation number 6. And in that case, uh, now we need to show that the solution, this is a convergence series and hence this gives a continuous solution. So for that, um, Consider mod fx plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity mod lambda raised to n mod k kappa n of fx. This will be less than or equal to mod fx plus uh, summation n equal to 1 to infinity mod lambda raised to n and mod kappa n of fx is we know uh, it is m less than or equal to m raised to n b minus a raised to n into m. Substituting that we will get uh, this will be less than or equal to m into uh, 1 plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity mod lambda raised to n m raised to n into b minus a raised to n and consider the series uh, uh, m into 1 plus the infinite series mod lambda raised to n m raised to n b minus a raised to n and we know that uh, we have mod lambda is less than 1 by m into b minus a. So since we have this condition we can say that the infinite gp is conversion uh, in this inequality and uh, mod fx plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity mod lambda n mod lambda raised to n mod of kappa n of f of x is dominated by the series on the right side which is a, a conversion which is a series of constant terms um, and hence it converges by we know that by the uh, series uniform convergence test for uh, series of functions we can apply that one here because uh, for this series given by uh, infinite series of functions given by in equation 6 we can have the uh, elements or the nth term or uh, the series is dominated by another series m in a series of constant terms which is conversion and hence the original series or the series in the left hand side converges absolutely and uniformly in open interval a b whenever mod lambda is less than 1 by m into b minus a. This is because we have, uh, we have applied the result. A series of functions of x which is dominated by a convergent series of positive constants independent of x for all x in closed interval a b is uniformly convergent in uh, closed inter sorry open interval a b thus we can see that the series y of x is equal to fx plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity lambda raised to n kappa n of f of x that is given by the equation number 6 converges uniformly and absolutely provided mod lambda is less than 1 by m into uh, b minus a. 
Now it will it is is then easily seen by a direct substitution that uh, term by term integration that the series six actually satisfies the integral equation y of x equal to f x plus lambda integral a to b p k of x theta y theta d theta and hence represents the continuous solution of the integral equation when mod lambda is uh, less than 1 by m into b minus a and k is continuous so this gives the um, and it follows that equation number 6 gives a continuous solution for the given integral equation non homogeneous integral equation of the second kind this is also app applicable for the volterra type integral equation also or when we observe thoroughly we can see that the uh, series 6 gives the uh, convergent solution or gives the continuous solution uh, only if uh, when mod lambda is less than mod lambda 1 which is the smallest uh, um, characteristic value uh, having uh, which is the characteristic value of uh, smaller magnitude smallest magnitude or it is the smallest uh, carat, ma magnitude characteristic value of magnitude uh, and um, when mod lambda is less than mod lambda 1 and only then uh, the series 6 uh, converges and hence becomes a continuous solution of the corresponding integral equation now we will check the same conditions for the volterra type integral equation so consider a second a second kind in uh, volterra type integral equation y of x is equal to fx plus lambda integral a to x k of x theta y theta d theta we define here uh, an integral operator as uh, kappa uh, we denote it by kappa x kappa suffix x such that kappa suffix x of f of x is defined in uh, define that integral a to x k of x theta f of theta d theta and is a procedure analysis similar to that used above for the uh, fredholm equations we can uh, have the formal solution y of x equal to f x plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity lambda raised to n kappa x raised to n of f of x if the expression rn of x equal to lambda raised to n kappa x raised to n of y not of x tends to zero as n tends to infinity this gives equation number 9 gives the solution of the corresponding integral equation so in this case if we consider any interval open interval ab where b is any number larger than a then and mod k of x theta less than or equal to m and mod fx less than or equal to m small m and mod of y not of x less than or equal to c as above then we have kappa x of y not of x that means uh, here we need um, we are going to prove that rn of x converges to zero as n tends to infinity so in that case uh, kappa x of y not of x by definition we will get it is uh, integral a to x modulus of integral a to x k of x theta y not theta d theta then um, we have this will be less than or equal to mc into uh, x minus a where a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b and kappa x square of y not of x will be less than or equal to m square into uh, c into x minus a whole square by 2 into 1 this is simple calculations as we already done in the case of fredholm equations now inductive reasoning um, we can see that modulus of uh, rn of x is equal to mod of lambda raised to n kappa x raised to n of y n of x which is less than or equal to mod lambda raised to n m raised to n x minus a raised to n by n factorial into c or this is less than or equal to mod lambda raised to n um, since x lies in between a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b so x is less than or equal to b so all this one will be less than or equal to Uh, mod lambda raised to n m raised to n b minus a raised to n by n factorial into c given by equation number 11 for a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b in a similar way it is found that lambda raised to n kappa x raised to n of f of x is also less than or equal to mod lambda raised to n m raised to n b minus a raised to n by n factorial into 
small m for a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b. But the last member of uh, 11 uh, tends to 0 as n tends to uh, infinity because uh, in the denominator there is n factorial like that. So we have uh, and also the series whose nth term is given by the uh, RHS of equation 12 converges for any value of lambda. And from the um, form of uh, from the uh, RHS of from the expression in the RHS of equa uh, the inequality 11, we can see that the series uh, with the nth term having the RHS will be uh, convergent uh, for any value of uh, lambda. Then uh, the method of successive substitution converges to the series 9 and uh, that the series converges absolutely. 9 means it is the solution of the corresponding Volterra integral equation. So we can see that for any value of lambda, the series uh, converges. 9 also converges. That the series converges absolutely and uniformly for any finite value of lambda in any interval uh, mode A, interval open interval AB for which B, B is greater than A. And similar case holds for B less than A also. Then uh, it then follows by direct substitution that the series 9 converges to the unique continuous solution of the Volterra type integral equation 7 for all values of lambda in any interval, open interval AB in which F and K are continuous. So this is about the uh, solution for Volterra type integral equation using the iterative method. So the theory part is over. Mm, now we need to uh, do the problems of the section that we will discuss in the next video. Thank you. Thank you all.